Hi, welcome to the Chaz Palmentary Podcast. We got a great guest today, but like I always do, I won't tell you who it is. First, I want to tell you about my site, chazpalmentary.net. If you'd like to see my one-man show, I'm doing a United States tour starting in March. Chazpalmentary.net, you will have the whole schedule. Also, if you want to buy my car, the saddest thing in life is Wasted Talent. And I have original posters from the original one-man show. Uh, so many things are on that site. Please check it out, chazpalmentary.net. Go to my restaurant, 30 West 46th Street or 264 Main Street in White Plains. So, very excited. Finally got him on the show. So many people asked. They said, why don't you get him on your podcast? Well, I did. Here he is, the one and only, the real deal. A lot of guys bullshit they're the real deal. But, folks, this is the real deal. Michael Francis. Michael, so great to have you on the show. Chaz, I had to get you all the way out on this, this end. Did you know Joe Pistone, Donnie Brasco? I met Joe Pistone on the street once. Right. He came to my car dealership with yeah. uh, with Lefty. Yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, yeah. Now I know him very well. We become good friends. <laughs> he did my uh, show a couple of times. He did your times. show, yeah, right? Yeah, a couple of times. The real yeah. Donnie Brasco the did The real show. Donnie Brasco. And you know what? I like him a lot. Yeah, he's, he's a good, good guy. great guy, yes. Yeah, he's a good guy, and we become friends. It's it's amazing. You know, I become friends with him. Recently, uh, I'm talking, after 30 years, I'm talking to Giuliani. You're talking to Giuliani. And these are the guys that will put you away. Put me away, yeah. Wow. You know, now, so we can get a, a, an idea. Was when you saw Donnie Brasco, I, I, I thought Al Pacino did an amazing job in that movie. I really did. Was was he a little? Was he like the guy Lefty in a way? <sighs> that was for me. Yes. I mean, I love Pacino as an actor. He's right. brilliant. Right. But that role. Right. He was. He everything. His mannerisms. The way he spoke. Right. The things that he did. I mean. I'm telling you, I I love that movie. I, I loved love his performance movie. in that movie. I thought it was more Oscar worthy. Yes. Oh, absolutely. He was he was brilliant, yeah. and he he was like Lefty in a way. I mean, he captured the role. He he, he played Lefty better than Lefty. He captured yeah. the role so well. Um, it's just the little nuances of things when he did. Remember when he said, "Hey." The money, you know, a beaner on the outside, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, dressed yeah. like me. I mean, I can tell yeah. you the whole movie uh, where he said, you know, you yeah. want to kill me with that draft when they're driving in a car? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing that kills me is I've turned down a couple of parts of my in the life. I never regret it. That's the only part I ever turned down. Really? I had the part of Sonny Black. Oh, man. Michael Madsen played yes, it. And it was yes. absolutely fantastic. He was great. Yeah. It was great. But I had the part. They offered it to me, but I was directing a film. And I couldn't do it, and I had oh. to turn it down. And I, 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 and I regret it so much because I love the movie so much. So good. I love that movie so much. And I go, oh, my God, I wish I was in that movie because I just love the movie. I love the, the, the sense of it, the, the, the reality of it. I thought in Goodfellas, I thought they built up Henry Hill. He wasn't that big, was he? Listen, the real Henry Hill. Not... Henry never looked so good as he did in that movie. Trust me, he was nothing like that. Um, Henry was. Was he made Henry? No, no. He, oh, he, he couldn't he was get Irish, made. Yeah, he couldn't get he, made. He That's was, right. Uh, Henry was a poor soul. I mean, he was always. He had a drug issue. He was always a knock around guy. Right. I had a little affection for Henry because when he was doing that Boston uh, uh, college scandal, I made a couple of bets with him on it. Right. Yeah, back then because I I knew him fair, but he was nothing like that. No, nothing like that at all. I mean, that movie made him, you know. But uh, like I said, he was always always a poor soul. I, I, I had one incident with him. You know, the Bureau of Prisons makes mistakes sometimes. So Henry was in jail. He was in prison, but he was on separation, obviously, from everybody because he was in the program. Right. I'm at Terminal Island, prison. I walk out of the chow hall, and I see a guy, and he had aged Henry. And I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. And then I, I said, I wonder if that's Henry Hill. What the heck was he doing here? I go back to my cell. Lieutenant comes and gets me, brings me to, to the office. He says, Michael, who'd you see on the yard today? I says, what are you talking about? He says, Michael, who'd you see on the yard? I says, what do you want from me? I said, I happen to notice a guy. He says, this is bad. We're going to have to ship you out. I ship me out. I'm here 40 minutes from my house. I've been here two years. Ship him out. I said, if guys know he's here on the yard, they're going to kill him. I said, ship him out. 
Well, he had already PC'd up. He put himself in protective custody. Uh, and this was a good lieutenant. He was Lieutenant Naval. I said, Lieutenant, you can't ship me out of here. I'm 40 minutes Because you just house. looked at him. I mean, yeah, just... just seen him. Well, he got scared when he seen me. And I said, you got another 10 guys here. I said, I ain't going to do nothing, but he ain't going to survive here. So they, they shipped him right out. But that's a Bureau of Prisons. He made a mistake. They put him in, in with guys he was population. separated from. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so they make mistakes. Trust me, they make mistakes. So by rights, I mean, he must have said, "What are you doing? Put me in here." Yeah, I don't, well, maybe he didn't realize who was in there until he spotted me, and then when he spotted me, he PC'd up right away, protective custody, and wow. uh, that was it. Wow. I mean, that's. I mean, this is, folks. What you're hearing is, you know, Henry Hill and and Lefty, and wow. Yeah. I mean, because people are, we're like fascinated with that. What, did you know Jimmy the Weasel? I did not know. He was uh, Fratiano? No, Jimmy he, uh, Fratiano, he, yeah. He was before my time, but uh, he caused a lot of damage. Would you say that Valachi was the first one to turn? Valachi was the first major guy to really blow the whistle on mafia. Go, on Cosa Nostra. Yeah, he, he was. And I don't know if anybody actually went to jail because of him, because he uh, he, he was in the big Senate investigation right. hearings. Right, yeah, yeah, and Those yeah. hearings are all BS. But he, you know, they're a show for the public, but... Um, that's when I think Hoover and the FBI really said, oh, this is for real. And that's when they started to focus on us. Yeah. Wow. Now, did uh, Appalachian really happen? That yes. was the big meeting. Yes. And now from what I understand is from people I know, that after Appalachian, that's when they closed the books and they didn't open the books. That's for a while. correct. That's what I heard too. And that's what I was told. And, and they never had a meeting like that again, as far as I know. They never met no. all of them like that again. No. Because they realized this is crazy, yeah, it was, right? It was dumb. I mean, it was really, dumb. Yeah. I mean, why he, did they meet? I don't remember. Was there a reason? I don't why? know what the heck they were. I don't know what they were meeting for. But yeah. even my father said, "What these guys nuts?" You know. I remember he used to say, "What the hell are they all meeting there for?" I mean, he didn't go, but I heard him right. talking to me. And I used to ask him, "What?" He says, "Mike, these guys. I don't know what they were meeting there for. Putting on a show. We don't have to meet like that, you know." Yeah. I was in the movie. You know, analyze this, and <laughs> we, that was that's how we opened so up the good. movie with the Appalachian movie. <laughs> it thing, was you so know? good. Yeah. That, those those two movies were brilliant. Yeah. I mean, I uh, I like when you were at the Tellers. <laughs> oh, the tell yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, that was uh, that, a lot of that was out of lib. <laughs> was it? Yeah, I would be me and uh, wonderful actor. Um, oh my god, oh my god, I just went blank on his name. How could I do that? Yeah, I know who you mean, though. Yeah, he, he was just terrific, man. Him and I were just riffing. I'm you like these pants, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got you know how those guys are, they, they go from whacking a guy out to you like these pants, yes, and then yeah. your uh, your line closure, get to closure. the dictionary. No, that was <laughs> that was written in the script. That, that was, was in the great. script. I'll never forget my, that. The, the audience just went nuts. I left my head, head off on that. Yeah, I mean, some mobsters are funny. People don't realize they're funny, how, right? How, how did you keep a straight face with Billy Crystal in that scene? Oh, <laughs> what, no, well, let me tell you about the scene and uh, analyze this. What happened was, uh, I said to Harold Ramis, God rest his soul, who passed mm -hmm. away. I said, Harold, can I just riff a little bit on this? A little, you know? And he says, Yeah, you gotta do whatever you want. So then I get up there, Vinnie Boom Bots, Mikey Gaga, <laughs> so B is it May, but they call me, you know. Anyway, Billy liked it because Billy didn't have that in his. No. He liked it so much that he said, said to Harold, he goes, I want to riff. And Billy is so, so brilliant, gets on there and starts going, oh, uh, you know, uh, the doctor, the ding, the ding, the boom, the boom, <laughs> uh, show tunes. Uh, uh, nylons. I mean, oh my God! It was so funny. It was brilliant, and he was so funny, and uh, we and had to hold it in. A when few when times. he smacked jelly, was that in the script? That was or? funny. Well, because when when he smacked jelly, the first time he did it, it didn't really hit him hard, and and Bob said, "Well, well hold on, wait a minute." And Bob said, "No, you got you got to hit him." <laughs> Bob was one of those, you know, you got to hit him. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> Joe Vitarelli, terrific actor. Did it, now he passed away, right? He passed away, yeah. I loved him. In that yeah, loved, I loved him. Great, wonderful guy. And he slapped him. You want a fresh one? You want a fresh? <laughs> that was Billy coming up with that. That was and, so uh, good. That was just great shit, man. It really but, was. But, you know, it, what I loved about, what I love about wise guys, and then I meet people and I go, well, I knew the real, I know real wise guys. And so meeting you, because... You know, everybody thinks they're made. Everybody's made, yeah. right, Michael? Yes. Don't you get a lot of guys out here, they make it like they're made. They were never made, Michael. Come on. No. 
They were not. You know, because made guys don't want to be in the movies. That's right. Made guys don't want to audition. Made guys are not going to have some 25-year-old say, read these lines. That's right. That doesn't happen. No. But guys come out here, make believe they're big shots, and a lot of these California guys, they fall for it. Yeah, they don't know. They don't know. Yeah, I mean, they don't know. so many guys out here that just What was the guy? Tell, me, tell that story, Michael, when the guy said, you were at the, at the hotel. He said, I make one phone call. Oh, oh no. remember that? I'm in the San Suzanne, which was a club out on the island that my father had a piece of it then. Right. 20, 21, like that. Right. And uh, a guy by the name of Joe Black, who ran the place, comes over to me. I'm there with a couple of guys. And there's a guy at the bar that's being just not, not carrying himself right. He's right. using some of the women. So he said, Mike, will you go talk to this guy a minute? He's not, he's being, his behavior's not right. So I go talk to him. I say, look, why don't you be nice? You know, stay, have a drink, enjoy yourself, but don't bother these people. It's not. He looked at me, and he gave me the line that I hate. He right. said, you know who I am? Oh, God. Here right, we go. Right, Chaz? Do you right. hate that line? That's the worst line yeah. in the world. You know who I am? I said, no, tell me who you are, you know? He said, you know who owns this place? I said, no, tell me. He said, did you ever hear Sonny Francis? I said, I heard of him, yeah. He said, you know he's in prison? I said, yeah, I know that. He said... I make one phone call to his son, Michael, and he'll be here in one minute, and he'll show you what I can do and who I am, just like that. I said, Chaz, that, like, I seen red. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, come on out. Let me give you a different little respect, and, you know, I'll talk to you. That was the last time he ever I, We didn't kill him. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but that was the that. last time he ever did anything like that. But Wow. But that's uh, that's what people do. I, I When I hear that, do you know who I am? Do you know I, who I, I am? I just hate that line. Well, what happens if somebody says, do you know who I'm with? Now, if they say, you know, I'm with, I guess you got to give them the respect yes. of who well, yes. Who are you with? Yes. Something like that is different. You know, I used to tell guys all the time, you know, if somebody mentions somebody's name, back off. Back just off. be respectful because mm. we're in New York. Everybody knows somebody. Right. You know, and I had a couple of incidents with guys where they disrespected a guy after the guy said, hey, I'm with so-and-so. And they got in trouble for it. Right. If somebody mentions somebody's name, unless he's being disrespectful to you at that moment, I said, you, you say, all right, we'll settle this another way, yeah. you know? There's a difference between do you know who I am and do you know yeah. who I'm with? Yeah, and a lot of times I said, you with anybody? I'll ask them, you know, if I was having, you, you, you know, you got any friends, you with anybody? And if they would tell me yes, I said, all right, we'll handle this a different way then, you know? Because you don't know. But, you know, guys on the street, they just... And I'm I'm more sensitive to that because I know how many guys used my name, my father's name, and they we got in trouble for it. it. No, yeah, no, they we, have, no. Michael, I mean, it's so, it's so fascinating to talk to you because obviously, you know, you you have the inner workings. You you know how all this goes. Did you ever feel like, in your bones? And if you don't want to answer this question, you don't have to. That you ever walked into a room and you thought you were going to be killed? Yes. Really? Yeah, I had I had one incident like that, Chaz. Look, one of the horrors of that life, and I have to say that, you know, you, you make a mistake, your best friend walks you into a room, you don't walk out again. And, you know, look, I spent a lot of time in that life. I was a, I was a uh, captain, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, I know of those incidents. And it's something you got to be aware of. And I had an incident one night where I walked into a room I didn't know if I was going to walk out. It was really? that serious, yeah. And it was, it was. I was scared. I mean, I don't mind saying it. I mean, when you, when you think you're going to meet your maker, it's, it's scary. And uh, could you, I mean, could you tell us about? Yeah, it? I mean, you know, long story short, I'm making all this money in the gas business, and I'm turning over a lot of money. And this was my deal. I mean, it came to me, Wait, and I brought it to the family. Stories you're making eight million a week or something? We, well, I want to clarify that. <laughs> we, we were bringing into my operation between eight, ten million a week. A week. A week, yeah. Because we were selling gasoline. Jesus. We were God. stealing the tax money. We were selling a half a billion gallons of gas a month. We're taking down 25, 30, 40 cents a gallon. So it was a lot of money, right? And, uh, and I'm paying up to the family what I had to pay. Uh, but there's stories out there now that I'm making billions, you know, and it's all over the street. I got a jet plane. I got a helicopter. I got a house in Florida, so that was a house a in lie. L.A. That you, that you had a helicopter, planes. No, it wasn't a lie. Oh, it wasn't a lie. <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, folks, it wasn't a lie. No, no, I had a, I had a Lear 25A. I had a Bell helicopter. I had a house oh, in Florida. God. I had a house in uh, Marina del Rey. I, had a, I, I built right. a... Uh, 
a 7,000 square foot house in Long Island with a racquetball court and a, on two acres of land. I mean, I, <laughs> I was spending my money too. Right. But, um, you know, and I also had legit, I had a couple of dealerships, I had a production right. company, I had all that stuff. But the word on the street was that I'm making billions. Uh, and so, you know, there was an article, Chaz, I think it was in Newsday, that said that I was getting strong enough to break away from the Columbos and start my own family. It was, oh, and once it they was, hear that. It was a total fiction story. Right, yeah. It wow. had nothing to do with reality. It wasn't even a thought in my mind. But guys start to get, you know, what, what's going on here? And then my father's, you know, he's, he's out on parole and my father had strength and all of a sudden I got 300 guys under me and I got the Russians working with me. So guys get a little, you know, yeah, yeah. it's the life. So uh, I get a call that I got to go see the boss. And uh, I, I meet this guy. I'll tell half the story. I want to tell the whole story. Yeah, but of course. I meet this guy, Jimmy Angelina, another captain. I meet him in Brooklyn and now he's taking me to the house because... He was on parole, so we had to be careful how we go. We didn't want to get him violated if he was with us. So we're driving to, uh, to Brooklyn. We had to meet him in a house, in a basement apartment. Now, the guy that drove me, Jimmy, was my good friend. Well, he don't talk to me about what's happening. And I got a guy sitting in the back behind me. You don't know who he is? I think I saw him once or twice. Oh, but that don't look good. No, but I'm saying, what the hell's going on here? Am I going to have a problem? And I'm thinking about it and thinking about it. And uh, he starts talk, making small talk about the Yankees, but he don't tell me anything. We get out of the car, Chaz. It was, I'll never forget. It was a 30-yard, approximately 30-yard walk from the car to the basement apartment I had to go. It was an, uh, an August night. It was late. When I tell the story, immediately I hear the crickets chirping and I can smell the flowers. That's how keen my incenses were because I said, I'm, I'm going to get killed here. I'm walking down the path. Jimmy probably walks behind me, and then the other guy is behind him. So I'm saying, what, what the heck? My knees are getting weak. I'm telling my heart is starting to jump sure. out of my head, yeah. out of my chest. Because you don't know why. I no, no. And I, and I said, I know the protocol. You know, people have said to me, why didn't you cut and run? I don't know why. It wasn't heroic. It was robotic, like, oh, man, I'm dead. And uh, so I'm walking down the stairs, Chaz. When that door opened, I don't know how I didn't have a heart attack at that moment when the door opened. Because I know the setup, the guys, and that's it. It's done. And, uh, you know, I'm in the room. Obviously, I'm here, you know. So it was, uh, they yeah. were grilling me about the business and the Russians and this and that and that. And I resolved, I was starting to get mad. I was starting to get mad. But I said, wait a minute, you don't get mad with the boss. Let me right. keep quiet. I'm going to walk out. So this here. was a big boss. Oh, yeah. 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 And I said, uh, there was a couple of guys there. Yeah. And, uh you know, when we're finished, ah, have a glass of wine, they're hugging, you know, the usual routine. I said, okay, thank you. And I said, Jimmy, I got to go out to Long Island. Drive me to my car. I got a long drive. We get in the car. I'm mad at him. I know him all my life. All your life. All my life. So I look at him. I said, and he stops me. He says, before you say anything, let me tell you this. I said, what? He said, you did a good job in there tonight, Mike. This could have been serious. You held yourself up. I said to him, now I got more mad. Yeah, right. I said, you're my good friend. You know this and you don't warn me. You don't tell me anything on the way over here. What kind of guy are you? And I'm getting mad at him. And he looks at me, he says, stop. I said, what? He said, if it was the other way around, would you have told me? He knew what to say. And I thought about it for a minute. I said, no. He said, hey, this is the life we lead. He says, wow. you grew up in it. Wow. You wow. know, and... I tell you, it had an impact on me. But you know, it, I don't know what's wrong with me. Whoa. Whether this is right or wrong in my mind, I I have a way of just blowing things off and moving forward. I mean, I it stayed in the back of my mind, but like I said, okay, this is part of the life. This is what this is routine. This is part of the life. All this stuff is part of the life. Let me just move forward and and you know and operate i mean because if you think about that why didn't you turn around and run but i understand that because there's a little piece of you in the back of your brain saying maybe it's okay and, yeah. I, and if i run it looks like i'm it looks bad it looks bad yeah and it's it's you're yeah. so indoctrinated into the life yeah. if, if you run now it looks like i did do something yeah if i if i ran that would have been it you would have got whacked. Yeah, because then, then it would have shown fear. I mean, who knows what they would have thought, but it wouldn't have been a good look. It wouldn't have been a good, a good thing. look. No, no. Wow. So, you know, I was fortunate that night. I Look, I had a couple of close calls in my life. You know, one time I'm in Brooklyn. 
I'm going into a diner late at night. You know, diners we have. We don't have diners out here, but we have. I get out of the car. Boom, 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 boom. Somebody opens fire. I, me and two other guys. On you? Right? They open fire yeah. on you? I hit the ground. Boom, bullet holes all through the car. I get up. The guy screeches away. What happened? Right? Turns out they made a mistake. They thought I was somebody else, Jazz. Really? You believe, yeah, because we found out who did it. You don't make mistakes like that in that life, you know? Um, I mean, that's a big mistake. That's man. a huge mistake, yeah. You you pay for I mean, a mistake. Could guys get like whacked that. for that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they would have killed me. I would have been done. I don't know how they missed. You know, they were they were on the street, and I had pulled into the parking lot, and they just, boom, they opened fire. And uh, I didn't know what the heck it could be. And we were wondering, then we found out. Right. Yeah. Now, is it true... Is it true, Michael, when when uh, Castellano got whacked, that when when Gotti did it, there was they they put a contract out on him? Yes, that's because he didn't ask for permission. Yes, look, from what I know, Gotti was not well liked. Did by, you know by John? the other boy? Yeah, yeah, I met John a couple of times. Right. I mean, first time I met him uh, was just before his son Frankie died, and I went to the funeral, and and I had a couple of incidents with John. Yeah, but uh, you know, look. When you take out a boss like that, you know, if you don't if you don't go through the proper protocol with the commission and all that stuff, uh, people from the other families resent it. So and they put a hit they put a hit. Yeah, yeah. No doubt. Wow. So I mean, well, I think they were upset because uh, you know, they want a lot of the street guys wanted Neil to be the boss. Yeah, you know, and I look, I understand what, what John did. Look, in that life, if you know you're in trouble if you don't act first, you're going down. And I think John knew that Paul was upset with him. And he... He, he, he honestly, figured he was going to go back. Yeah, he made the right move. That's how you do it in that life. You don't wait around and yeah, I'll see what I, I know you're saying he made the right move, but he didn't get permission. Which was, no. I mean, he maybe he figured he couldn't get permission, you know? Probably. That, that Paul had, you know, had, had the strength at that point, but... Yeah. I understand. I mean, you you got to move first if you think that's coming down, and you're sure you you got to make a move or run away or, or something. Run away. Yeah. You know, it's very interesting that we did this. Uh, we did this thing, Michael and I, and Sammy the Bull. Yes. Uh, we did uh, Mafia States of America. That's right. just a great, great thing that you can uh, get it. Uh, where could they get that, Michael? MafiaStatesOfAmerica.com. dot com. MafiaStatesOfAmerica dot com. And, and just so you know, it's a ten part series. Right. You did a brilliant job in it, and uh, you know, narrating it, and uh, and people that have seen it have loved it. I mean, yeah. yes, they really did a great job. I mean, really I can did. honestly say that that is the first time. I, I I think so. I mean, unless I'm crazy, that was the first time legitimately two real made guys, bosses, mm -hmm. have a sit down on camera. Yeah, I never heard of. Uh, I've never heard of that. Never heard of it before, and probably never again. But you know, Sammy was the underboss. Sammy under, was under John. Underboss I was and a so, captain, and, and you were a captain, right? And two different families. He was Gambino. I was Colombo. But we we had a real sit down discussion. It got, as you know, it got, it got heated. heated at at times. Oh, it got yeah. real. No script. That got heated. No, it was no script at all. And and uh, Sammy and I have a different view of things. Right. And it came out. Right. You know? I mean, in the end, it was smoothed over. We worked I think. it over. Yeah, we worked but it, it over. That was an interesting thing what he said, but I never heard. It, I never heard it put that way. He said that he was a gangster and you were a racketeer. Yeah, yeah. Well, he claims he's <laughs> he's gangster and racketeer. Oh, I'm, gangster and yeah, racketeer. He, okay. he says he is. I'm only a racketeer. He's a gangster. But you know, we had a discussion about that. You know, Sammy. Sammy's got the rep on the street, and he, he uh, you know, he did a lot of damage in in. Uh, according to what's reported and what he says. And me, I was more of a money guy, you know? But look, you know, Chaz, I, I, I said this to him and I say it to you. In that life, in the Colombo family, we had, we had during my time, 115 made guys, guys that actually took the oath. In your family? In our family. We were one of the smaller ones. And uh, it's funny, I used to ask Persico, I said, Junior, how come, you know, Gambino's got 250, Genovese got 250, we got 115. He said, I go for quality, not quantity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but that's what he said. But anyway, out of the 115, maybe 20 of us were earning money. That's it. The other guys, you know, who's got a no-show job, who's gambling, who's this and that and that. So those are the guys that when there was work to be done, naturally you make use of them, you know? Guys like me and guys that are earning money, look, there isn't, you know this, Jazz, there isn't an organization in life that doesn't operate without money. 
Whether you're right. on the street or you're legitimate or whatever, you got to earn. There got to be money. You got to bring money into yeah, the Yeah, so, you know, when you're bringing a lot of money and naturally the guys that are just hanging out on the streets, they're going to give them the, the heavy work. You still got to be ready and capable. You don't escape it, but you're not going to be put in a position when there's other guys around doing that stuff, you know? So, so, so Michael, it, it, it's, yeah, it's very interesting. Like, like a family that's 115, you know, 20 guys are earning what are the other guys doing? Do they get, how are they making money? How are they getting a salary? You know, if they don't get a salary. You know, they have no show job. Maybe they got a union job. Maybe they're doing a little stick up here. Maybe they got to trying to get a little gambling operation, a little right. number. It's all that kind of stuff. You but know? they're made. They're made guys. Yeah, yeah. And so not everybody who's made is is doing great. Oh no, absolutely not. Oh, okay. Absolutely not. Uh, you know, I think that's the big fallacy out there. The other fallacy is you're a made guy, you go to prison, a family takes care of you. No way. No way. They don't. Absolutely not. My dad, when he went away, he had a couple of business deals that money was still coming in, but it was his deals. When the money ran out, that was it. No more money. Nobody supported him. The family wasn't giving us any money so at all. So the family's a destitute. <clears throat> That's it. So you got to go out and you got to earn your own way. You got to figure it out. When I went to jail, I didn't get a penny from anybody. Nothing. Not a dime. Wow. Yeah. And people think, oh, you're in the family. They're going to take care of you. And I don't know if they're supposed to take care of you or not. I'm just saying they're not. You know, unless you had something going, a business on the street that they can maintain for you that was yours, Okay. But so many guys, when they go to jail, they're broke. They paid for their lawyer. They take it. They're broke. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's why the wives go to work or they do whatever they got to do. But uh, I mean, do most wives leave the husband when they go to jail for a long time? Many, many, many do. Yes. Well, many. first of all, who wants to date a mob guy's wife while he's in jail? <laughs> I <true>. don't. <laughs> no, it's not a good idea. It's not, no, a, good not idea. a good idea. No. I mean, I mean, wow. Talk <laughs> about, you know, who's your, you know, you meet a girl, or who's your. Oh yeah, my husband's in jail. You know, oh, who is he? And then she tells you, "What? No, no." I know. No, I mean, there were the one thing we do have to say. They did have rules. You couldn't mess with a guy's family's fooling no. around, right? No, Michael, you don't mess with a guy's wife, sister, mother, daughter. No, you don't do that. That's, like if you're a wise a guy, like, and he has a daughter that's. Of age, 30 years old, you still don't go after her. Try well, to, no, you can. I you mean, can if, ask. It's, if it's a respectful, yeah. yeah you I can mean, ask for permission. Absolutely. You're going to be respectful. You could, I mean, look, a made guy can can marry another made guy's daughter if it's allowed and they agree. Yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. But you can't be cheating with somebody. No, you can't do that. Or, or not do the right thing with a wife, a daughter, a sister. No, you yeah. don't do that. We're yeah. told that the night we got made. You told you know, the night you got made. So oh, yeah. that's one of the rules. One of, I mean, actually, when I was proposed, they told me that immediately. When you get made, they tell you again. You don't mess with anybody. I mean, you know that already, but they yes. just reiterate it. And it's the thing with the saint and the burning and the whole yes. thing. It was a very solemn ceremony. You know, it was dimly lit room late at night. How many guys were there when you got made? I, I, well, there was all the captains were allowed to be there. And the underboss and the consigliere, the soldiers are not allowed to be there, but all the captains are there. And uh, there were six of us the night I got made, and we went into a room one at a time. They do it individually. You know, and, and here's it to... to, uh, so, to uh, so more than one person gets made? It, it, it all depends oh, on it all depends yeah, on. what's happening, right? But that night there happened to be six of us. After we do it, we go into... We did it at the El Doro. I don't know if you know what that was. It was uh, Anthony Colombo had a, a catering hall. It was right. Joey Colombo's son. So we did it there late at night. And afterwards, we went and had a banquet in the banquet room. And I'll never forget, one of the guys there comes in with a paper bag. And he says, okay, boss, should I give all the new guys their bag of money now? Right? It was a joke. And the boss looks at, hey, you think you came in here to, but we're going to feed you? No, no, no. You feed up to me. He said it just like that. Tom DeBelly, he's gone now. Wow. But he made you understand right now, this isn't a handout you're getting. You got to support the family, support yourself. You feed up to me. Oh, yeah. Wow. He said, you. it goes up the, lane, up the ladder. I'll tell you, I'm a recruit, and I'm learning the ropes, right? I, find, I get a score. It was a load of meat. A load of meat, right? Right. So now you got to put everything on record. Anything you do, you got to be on record with your cop regime, with the guys in charge. Of right. It. So I go and tell him, uh, this guy, I said, look, I got a load of meat. <clears throat> I'm going to sell it. What do I do? He said, when you sell it, bring me the money. 
I said, okay. So I got the load. I sell it to a guy that I know, catering hall that he had. I get like six or seven thousand right. dollars. Right. I bring it to him. He said, okay, I, I'll get back to you. Next day I see him again in Brooklyn. He hands me six hundred dollars. My score, my load, my meat, I bring it in. I said, I get 10%? <laughs> right. yeah, how did that happen? Oh, look, I didn't say a word. I go see my father. He was in love with it. I said, Dad, well, you know, I get 10%. It was my, I did everything. He said, you don't make that mistake again. He says, from now on, he says, if it's your deal, you bring it in, you give the family 25%, you keep the rest. He said, that's our formula, 25%. He said, now, if they finance you, if they help you in any way, maybe they get a bigger piece. But if it's your score, 25%. So this guy used your, used your na naiveness to yeah. say, yeah, bring me the money. Yeah. Now, here's 600. 600. Well, suppose if you would have just gave him 25%, he would have had to yeah, take it. I said, it. hey, I made a score here. It's for, it's for this you. This is for you. Yeah. But I was learning at that. They're always know. scheming. Always <laughs> scheming. They're <laughs> always scheming. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, that turned you off right away. 600 bucks. I mean, I did everything. Why know. am I taking the, what, then I, I got to go away and enjoy it if I do this? No. No, it's not going to, we're not going to do now, that. I'll tell you the, the other part of it, which I did. Another side, I got a club out in Long Island, and the guy wants me to book acts for him. And I had a contact to book the acts. I didn't have any money. I was on a trial. I was broke, right? And I was kids, 23, 24 years old. So I go see my captain. I said, look, uh, I need 10 grand. You're going to be my partner. We're going to book these acts. You're going to make money every week, right? He gives me the 10 grand. We stop booking the acts. For three months, I lost money. Three months. But every week, I went and gave him an envelope and said, here, we made it. This $1,000 is your end. 1500 is your end. Chaz, the best move I ever made. From that point on, anytime I wanted any money, they gave it to me. Whatever I needed, if Whoa. I was starting something, and I always re realized at that time, you got to make people earn, man. That's gotta it. Got to make people. Got to make. Now, people did you earn. know the guy Noby Wolfus? Very well. Do you know Noby was my guy? <laughs> did you know that? I did not know that. I never told you that. No, Noby I didn't was know. my agent. Really? Yes. And he was a great agent. Great agent. <laughs> never, best. never too big. No. <laughs> That's Noby. He was a great agent. He was a great. Noby was my agent. When I was uh, working. Yeah? For how the, long? Oh, Norby was my agent for years. <laughs> for years. Let, oh, I know Norby really well. Listen, I'm in, uh, my dad comes home. I know Norby. as <laughs> Uncle Norby from the time I'm a kid. Uncle Norby. I never told my son about Norby. You don't know how many times I, stuff I had with him. My dad comes home. We're in a stage delicatessen in Manhattan. You remember the stage, right? Stage deli, yeah. Deli. Seeing Norby for the first time after my dad's away. My dad was partners with him. Remember the Wait, club Norby. he had? The Norby yeah. Walters Club was across from yes, the Copa. Yes, yes. That was my father's joint with Your him. Your father had a piece of yes, that. Yes, yes. So um, we're, sitting in a sans we're sitting in a stage delicatessen. Me and my dad are here. Norby's on the other side. And my dad tells him he had started the agency now where he was booking all the black talent. Remember, he had everybody. Yes, shit. Dion Warwick, everybody, yeah. right? And me. And, and you. Yes. And I love Norby because I used to get tickets for every event that I wanted. Yes. I used to give him anything, anything I wanted. Anything. So we're there. And my father says, Norby, uh, I'm your partner in this agency. You know, when I went away, you said, whatever, we're partners from this and that. And Norby looks at him and he says, uh, Sonny, I don't remember it that way. He said, I, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> he says, you don't know anything? Else? Nobody's eating a pastrami sandwich. I'll never forget. And he says, you don't remember it that way? He says, if I put a bullet in your head and your head falls in that pastrami sandwich, will you remember that I'm your partner? Norby turned white. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My father, you know. And Norby, like, he didn't know what to say. So I jump in. I said, Dad, look. I said, Norby and I, we got this all straightened out. Don't worry about it. Every week he's going to give me, we're doing this stuff together. I was making it up. I was going along, right? Because my father was serious. He was mad. Yeah. I said, so let me handle it from this point. Don't worry. Norby's going to do the right thing. Not a problem. And uh, and that's how we got out of there. And Norby afterwards, he was like shaking like a leaf, like a leaf. Well, yeah. But, but Norby was wrong because my dad was his partner. But so, so Norby said yes and then tried to say no. 
Well, originally you said yes because yeah. there were partners in that club, and then one day, yeah, then later on, you're right. That's then he, then he said, "No, I don't remember it that way." I don't remember it that way. You and can't then, do that. And another guy who she's passed on now, Persigo, came to me and he said, "You know, this guy is using your name all the time. He doesn't pay up. The family's not making anything." So this stayed with Norby, and Persigo wanted to kill him. Really? So, yeah. He said, "We don't let guys get away with this." And I saved him. I said, "No, Junior." He's a good guy. Don't worry about it. He's around my father. My father was away. He's around my father forever. Did you know uh, Corky Vastola? So I, you yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. Corky also wanted to kill Norby. Norby was getting in a lot of trouble because he kept, and he was so sharp, Norby. He was just. He, damn, he is the sharpest. So sharp. And so likable. Yes. And so likable. So sharp. And he, uh, everybody wanted to, and I saved him on the street. Yeah. I'm telling you, Chaz, I saved him on the street. I always liked Norby a lot. Yeah, he, he was, uh, you know, and then I, it broke my heart. You know, they brought me in to testify in his case when he was. On his he, case? Yes. Wow. Chaz, I'm in jail. Well, before I went to prison, he went into the, uh, uh, he was representing athletes. Yes. In college, remember? I gave him money. I, I financed him on that. Him and Lloyd Bloom. Right. I go away. I'm in jail three years. They pull me out. They're going to indict me in a case with him. He got indicted in Chicago. Norby. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was threatening these uh, agents. He was making them sign uh, contracts before their elig eligibility. He was paying them under the table, right? Oh. The whole case. And so they bring me in, and uh, he's threatening them with my name. I said, hey, I'm in jail. I don't know what, I haven't spoken to him in years. Right. I don't know what he's doing. Anyway, they subpoenaed me to testify in a trial, and it, it was a mess, you know. It was, it was but it mess. worked out okay for him. Yeah, he didn't go to jail. He's a good guy, yeah. He didn't go to jail. Yeah, wow. That's, yeah. I know, but see, once you say yes, I told you the story. For those on, on my channel, on my podcast, I don't know, when the Wise Guys, when I, won the, when I got nominated for the Academy Award, and I went to the, back to the neighborhood, I went to this one bar when I shouldn't have went, but there were guys in there I wanted to see, and I went in there, and then they said they wanted to talk to me in the back. And always, I always say that's not a good thing. When somebody <laughs> says, I want to talk to you while they're already talking to you, it's not a good <laughs> that's thing. That's not a good thing. And they brought me in the back, and they were all sitting around a big table. I'll never forget it. It was like the red and white tablecloth. I sat down, and he said, to make a long story short, he said, we have some. I have a person in L.A. Uh, we're very proud of you. We're, we're, you're doing great. He's going to make some phone calls to you. You can make a movie with him, be his partner. And I said... Right away, in my mind, as I was walking towards that table, Michael, I said, I will take a fucking bullet in the head right now before mm -hmm. I give these guys a piece of my life. I really, I said that. Mm -hmm. And I'm no fuck. I mean, I can handle myself, but I'm no fucking tough guy. I just said, I will not, I will not fucking, you know, give a piece of me to these mm -hmm. guys. And I sat down and I said, I'm sorry, I don't need anybody to make a phone call for me, but thanks a lot. And they said, what are you, a big star now? And I said, nah, not me, you're the big star. In other words, I, I disarmed them. You disarmed them. And I stood up and I said, I gotta go. And one guy made a crack. He goes, come outside, come on. I'll put my arm around you, you can take a picture with the FBI. I said, ah, it's okay, never mind that. And I left and I never went back to that bar again. Because I knew, yeah. once you say yes, and then you say no, I would have got whacked. You're you're absolutely right. You could say no if you say it the right way, right. the way you obviously did. Right. And you're a but if you say yes and then you try to back out, no, it ain't happening. Because then they say, well, what? Well, what? Everybody could do this then. Exactly. The it's word gets happening. out on the street that I'm a pussy. That's that all right. you got to do is back out on this guy. Forget it. And uh, and a lot of times, see, and you're like like you uh, experienced. If you say no, there's guys that are respectful and say, all right, he wants to do it on his own. Right. We'll leave it alone. You leave know? it alone. Leave yeah. the guy alone. You know, maybe one day we'll get a favor from him. We want to see a show. You know, and they leave it alone. Exactly. You know? Uh, but you got to do it the respectful. right way. You did it the right way. Yes. You can't say, you know what, go fuck yourself. No. I don't want it. No, that, you're going to get a beat. <laughs> yeah. yeah you, or you, maybe you, worse. Uh, exactly. Or maybe worse. But well, that saved gonna, your career. Yeah. That saved my career. You know, yeah. I know by by turning that down, it, you know, and I'm still friends with them. I still, yeah. well, most of them are dead now. There's like one of them that's still alive. But uh, they see me and we talk, but they always say, hey, come have dinner with me. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I never have dinner. I don't go. No, you're you know, right. I don't want to go. You don't need it. You don't need it. I don't, I, I don't want to go, you know. I remember when I did the show on Broadway, they all came. They sat in the front. A bunch of them came. And Did you know, did you know Rusty? Yeah. You Rusty Ristelli? Yeah, Rusty yeah, Ristelli, sure. yeah. 
He came, he was old back then when he yeah. came to see the show. And he was a good guy. He's a good guy. He's a good guy, yeah. He was so him. nice to me. He always yeah. he was always so nice to me, you know. Yeah. And a very, very, very nice guy. We well, see there's a thing too, Chaz. Guys that are doing well, you know, it's like they used to tell me with Norby, why don't you take money off him? I'm bringing in ten million dollars a week in the gas business. What do I need to take a, a right, couple right. hundred off of Norby for? Exactly. Like, give me tickets. You know, I used to see Marvin Gaye, Dionne Warren, right, wherever yeah. I wanted to go, boom, tickets, eh, eh, anything. Eh, that was good enough for me. That know? was good enough for you. And Michael, we're, we're going to wrap it up now, but you want to tell some people about, about your uh, your podcast and what you're doing? Because I encourage all of you. His podcast is incredible. The things you learn just from what you heard tonight is nothing. The things you'll hear from him and his Patreon, get on his account because it's pretty incredible. Well, you know, thank you, Chaz. And, you know, look, been very, very fortunate to have guests like you on. And, and we call it a sit down. You know? A sit down. We call, have a you sit guys down. call it a sit down. Yes. That's right. And, uh, you know, we tell, we tell some stories of my experiences because people are interested in that life like we did now. I think it was terrific. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I always try to, my thing, Chaz, over the years is try to give some encouragement to people, some words of wisdom. Because, look, you, you have a street sense. You've been around it. There's things that you learn on the street and you experience in life mm. that you're not going to find anywhere else. Right. And I try to use it to benefit people. And we have, uh, you know, I have an inner circle group where we, uh, we mentor people. Mm. We got several thousand people in and now. We provide content and product and we have, we bring them out, we meet with them. We have phone calls and Zoom calls with them. And we're really trying to better them in business and leadership and their life. And I got another book coming out, you know, in February. It's a, it's a, it's a political book. It's called The Mafia Democracy. And it's, it's just, um, you know, Chaz, I, I, I've never lived through a time like we're living through now. Absolutely. Seeing what's going on with our government. It's not a partisan thing. It's just our government. And, you know, hopefully people will be inspired by it, put the right people in office. And uh, uh, possibly a television show that's in uh, in development right now. I heard right about now. that. Yeah, TV yes. series that we're very excited that's about. That's fantastic. Yes, and I'm hoping that you're going to be part of it. That's, I, that's I, it. I mean it. My pleasure. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be great. I got the role for you already. Okay. You may do different, but I'm not going to say anything All yet. All right. And then uh, we got this wine coming out. You know, you I got, got your a, wine. Yes, I tasted it. It is fantastic. Uh, excellent, excellent. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, Francis branded wine. We're very Francis excited about branded it. wine. Yeah, it's called Michael Francis. That's the brand, and there's a great story behind it. And uh, we're going to be uh, uh, distributing it very shortly. We first got our big uh, truck uh, uh, boatload in. So uh, we got a lot of things, a lot of opportunities coming my way, and we try to use it uh, really to benefit people and uh, just do the right thing. Now, here's a man, and I say this to my audience. People go, ah, you know, I never caught a break in my life. I can't do anything with my life. I know that this, I, you know, I can't succeed. This man did eight years in jail, mm-hmm. 29 months in the hole. Yep. 29 months in the hole, folks, in the hole, solitary, which is not supposed to be for any person. I, I agree with Am that. Am I right or wrong? Absolutely. Okay. And here he is today. And what he's accomplished is an absolute honor to have you here from the bottom of my heart because a man who faced what you faced and came back and did what you did, a wife, beautiful wife, beautiful children, I don't want to hear it from anybody. Don't tell me you can't change your life. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And I tell you, I don't want to... Fucking hear it. Look what this man has done. It's an honor to have you on my show. I really mean that. And uh, and God bless you. And I hope we do it again. Well, Chaz, thank you. And it's been an honor to be in your presence and now have a friendship. And I just want to leave with this. You know, you're only as good as the people that you have around you. And right. I've been very, very fortunate and blessed to have a good family, good people working with me. And they keep me on track. And, uh, you know, you are who you hang with in this life. That's right. You know that. And uh, I've been fortunate to make the right decisions later on, and it's worked out. All right. Listen, thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's the end of the show. And uh, God bless you all. And remember, go to chaspometary.net to see about my one-man show. and it'll It'll be at a city place near you. God bless.